Hello everybody, welcome to Scratch the Surface Podcast. I am Real Pestanio. If you're new here, this is the space where we zoom in on the Bible and have a great time. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. In our previous episode, we talk about what is the gospel. And we have learned that the gospel is all about God. The gospel is all about Jesus Christ. The gospel is from God. And then we also talk about how powerful is the gospel. Sa Romans chapter 1 verse 16, nakasulat doon that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. So napag-usapan na natin ang what of the gospel, napag-usapan na rin natin how powerful the gospel is. For today, we will talk about the why of the gospel. Why do we need the gospel and why are we commanded by our Lord Jesus Christ to preach the gospel? Sa Romans chapter 1, verse 18, it clearly states that the only reason we preach the gospel is that the wrath of God from heaven is revealed against all ungodliness and unrighteousness. So for today's episode, we will have an in-depth study kung ano yung sinabi ng Bible patungkol po sa wrath of God. Sa Tagalog, ang galit ng Diyos o ang puot ng Diyos. First, let me begin by saying that the gospel is a universal need. When we say universal need, everyone needs it. No matter the country, the race, the the ethnic or the tribe that you belong, whether you're Filipino, American, Chinese, Japanese, everyone needs the gospel. Why? Because the Bible testifies that every human being is a sinner. Wala pong perfect, as in moral perfection, in comparison sa standard ng Panginoon, wala pong perfect. So, anumang lahi mo, saan ka man nakatira, kailangan mo ang gospel dahil lahat ng tao, according to the Bible, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So, since everyone is a sinner, everyone is subject to the wrath of God. Sa galit ng Panginoon. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3, basahin ko sa NLT. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's wrath, just like everyone else. All of us, brothers and sisters, are subject under the wrath of God. So, the reason why na sinishare ko ito, because I believe that the failure to grasp the intensity of the wrath of God is the very reason that we take the gospel for granted. Ito ang pinakadahilan bakit marami ang ini-ignore ang gospel. Dahil hindi nila naintindihan yung bigat at tindi ng galit ng Diyos. Akala nila ang gospel is all about God loves them and God is merciful and God is forgiving and God loves you no matter who you are. That's not the gospel is all about. Dahil kung if it's all about love, we don't have to preach this. We don't need to preach this. But the reason why we preach this because ito ang katotohanan na merong tinatawag na galit ng Diyos. Sa panahon natin ngayon, madalang na lang natin naririnig yan eh. Yung pangaral patungkol sa wrath of God. It seems like it's a forgotten doctrine or avoided doctrine iniiwasan. Mas gusto natin marinig yung love, preaching na love, preaching na grace. Because we are afraid to be misunderstood or matawag tayong judgmental, narrow-minded, and fundamentalist. But church, only from understanding the wrath of God, we could realize the necessity of the gospel. Sa pag-unawa ng galit ng Diyos, dito natin lubusang maiintindihan bakit natin kailangan ng gospel ng Panginoon. Kung hindi tayo maangaral ng wrath of God sa ating churches, sa ating pulpit, people will trivialize sin and people will will, fa- will fail to give reverence sa ating Panginoon. So let me give you a definition ng wrath of God. 
So wrath of God simply means holy anger or holy hatred. Other calls it that righteous indignation. Ang galit ng Diyos hindi ito katulad ng galit ng tao. Sobrang layo po. Infinitely above sa galit ng tao. Ang tao nagagalit pag nauubos na yung pasensya. Ang, ang tao nagagalit pag napikon. Minsan ang tao ay nagagalit kahit hindi naman dapat magalit. So ang galit ng tao is very flawed. Pero ang galit ng Diyos ay ibang-iba. Ang galit ng Diyos ay bunga po ng kanyang kabanalan at ng kanyang katwiran. Pag nagalit si Lord, hindi siya nagalit dahil naubos na yung pasensya niya o napikon siya. Hindi po ito emotional anger. It is foolish na i-compare natin yung wrath of God sa human emotion dahil ang human emotion ay laging may bakas po ng kasalanan, mga kapatid. Hindi perfect ang uh, emotion ng tao. Pero ang wrath of God is a holy nature. It's a holy nature na ayaw mag-tolerate ng unholy nature of men. Ang wrath of God ay consistent sa nature ng Panginoon. Ang wrath of God ay expression ng kanyang righteousness at ang kanyang pag-ibig. Dahil po ang kasalanan ang sumisira sa fiber and moral core ng every human being, kailangan magalit ng Diyos upang mag-intervene to stop sin and He did it because He was motivated by His holy love. Okay? Hindi po siya galit dahil wala siyang love. Kundi kaya siya nagagalit because of His love. That, that is what the Bible is telling us. So I'm going to give you five biblical explanation ng wrath of God or God's wrath. Number one, meron po tayong tinatawag na eternal wrath. Ito po yung sa Matthew, turn for, Matthew 13.42, Matthew 25.46, Revelation 2010, Revelation 2014, Revelation 2015, Revelation 21:8, Second Peter chapter 2 verse 4. Ito po yung tinatawag na eternal wrath which is the lake of fire, yung impierno. The second death, place of torment, a day of reckoning, penalty of eternal destruction. Ito po yung future judgment which is the lake of fire. Meron naman pong tinatawag na eschatol- esch- eschatological wrath. Ito po yung Galit ng Diyos na ibubuhos niya po sa mundo. Mababasa po natin yan sa Matthew 24, buong chapter na yan. Matthew 25, Revelation chapter 6 hanggang Revelation chapter 19. Ito po yung judgment ng Panginoon, ibubuhos niya dito sa earth. Maraming theologians tinatawag itong the Great Tribulation. Sa prophecy ni Zephaniah, describe niya ito na day of wasteless, desolation, darkness, and gloominess. Ito po yung ibubuhos ng Panginoon, yung kanyang judgment dito sa earth. And then, meron din tayong tinatawag na cataclysmic wrath. Itong cataclysmic wrath, ito po mga kapatid, na kung saan ang Diyos ay binuhos na yung kanyang galit, literally, at we knife out yung mga ungodly people in the past. Katulad ng sa panahon ni Noah, yung worldwide flood, apat na tao lang, uh, walong tao lang po ang nabuhay. Yung destruction ng Sodom and Gomorrah. Yung mga famine na nangyayari na ginagawang uh, judgment ng Panginoon sa bayan ng Israel. Mga, yung pestilence sa Ezekiel 6.11. Yung annihilation sa Deuteronomy 29 verse 22 to 23. So it happens in the past or it could also happen in the present and it could also happen in the future. Meron tayong tinatawag pang apat na sowing and reaping wrath. Ang sowing and reaping, by the word itself, ito po yung consequence ng atin pong mga violation. Lalong-lalo na particularly sa atin pong pangangatawan. Kung anong gagawin natin sa ating pangangatawan, aanihin po natin yan, mga kapatid. Kagaya ng AIDS, that's uh, one example. It's also a uh, sowing and reaping wrath. And then number five, ito yung last. Ito po yung tinatawag na the wrath of abandonment. The wrath of abandonment. So far, sa panahon natin ngayon, ito po ang pinaka-nakakatakot na pwedeng mangyari sa buhay mo. This is so scary. Why? Ito po yung panahon na i-abandon ka ng Panginoon at hayaan ka na lang niya sa sinful life na gusto mo. So dito tayo mag-focus sa wrath of abandonment. Dahil ito yung wrath na tinutukoy ni Paul dito sa Romans chapter 1, verse 18. 
the wrath of abandonment. This is the horror when God abandons you. This is the horror when God departed from you and no longer intervenes in your life. Hinayaan ka na lang niya. Dahil alam naman niyang di ka rin makikinig, di ka rin susunod. Hinayaan ka na lang niya at hindi na siya magkoconvict, hindi na siya magre-restrain, hindi na siya mag-i-intervene. Ito yung sinasabi ni Paul sa Romans 1.24, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the loss of their own hearts. Romans 1.26, For this cause, God gave them up. See that? God abandons them. God gave them up unto vile affections. Romans 1.28, And even as they did not like to retain in their knowledge, God gave them over. This is the wrath of abandonment. Pag ang tao ay napailalim sa wrath of abandonment, kung siya po ay makasalanan, mas lalo pang titindi at sasama ang kanyang pagiging makasalanan. Bakit? Yung boses ng konsensya ay nawala na, wala ng guilt, wala ng conscience, wala na siyang guilt sa kanyang moral sin, sexual sin, idolatry and li- negligence, inabandon na siya ng Panginoon. Sabi ni C.S. Lewis, The lost enjoy the horrible freedom they have demanded and are forever enslaved. That This is what happens when God abandons you. And this is what the Bible says, the wrath of God. Kailan to unang nangyari? Adam and Eve, they were abandoned, they were banished out of the garden. And the garden of Eden symbolizes the presence of God. Si Samson naranasan yun nung nafall siya sa temptation kay Delilah. The Bible says, and the Spirit of the Lord departs from him. Nangyari ito kay King Saul, mababasa natin, the Spirit of the Lord departed from him. But the most intense person na naka-experience ng wrath of abandonment is the one who didn't deserve it. And that is Jesus Christ. When Jesus was at the cross, the wrath of abandonment was poured out to Jesus Christ. Siya po ay nakaranas ng matinding agony dahil natikman niya ang pakiramdam ng isang sinner na inabando ng Diyos. Di ba kayo nagulat na nung nasa cross, ang sabi ni Jesus, ilay ilay lama sa baktani, which means, my God, my God, why hast thou Abandon me. Why hast thou forsaken me? So naranasan ni Jesus Christ yung wrath of abandonment upang yung mga sinner na mananampalataya sa kanya ay hindi na kailangan maranasan ang wrath of abandonment. The wrath of God was satisfied at the cross. Isaiah 53 verse 10. Marino po sinabi sa Bible, It pleased the Lord to bruise him. That is how powerful the gospel is. And only the gospel has the power to save you from the wrath of abandonment. Only Jesus Christ can do that. Only Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Holy God, Jesus, we worship you, Panginoon. Rebuke us not in your anger, nor chasten us in your wrath. Heal us from our sin, for we are troubled. Deliver us for the sake of your steadfast love. You are a holy God. You are a perfect, righteous. And I believe, Lord, yung galit mo hindi katulad sa galit ng tao. Lord, we have all sinned and fall short of your glory. Our sin is dark, complex, toxic, and destructive. But we know, Lord, you are compassionate and merciful. Because you are, despite of our rebellion, Ikaw, Panginoon, ang nag-alay ng iyong buhay para sa aming kaligtasan. Lord, we deserve justice, but you gave us your grace. Lord, help us to share this good news na ang bawat tao na mananampalataya sa iyo ay maliligtas sa wrath that is to come. Help us to see you rightly so that we may thank you for your appropriate, great, and powerful love, redeeming love. In Jesus' saving name, we pray. 
Amen. Thank you for listening, friends and buddies. Please like and follow our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Scratch the Surface. Bye!